the cherry tree, based off of the tale the almond tree from Turkey. Talia's face was like a complicated map full of ridges and wrinkles. Her back was bent over, and when she walked, she shuffled. Still, she had a twinkle in her eye, and she always had a kind word for her neighbors, her children, her grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. She spent most of her days in her rocking chair, looking out over her garden. If she had a visitor, she'd share memories of the good old days. When she was alone, she remembered to herself. Now and then, she'd hum a little or wiggle her fingers. It was during one of those mornings alone that Talia surprised even herself by coming up with an ambitious plan. She made a phone call. A few hours later, when the doorbell rang, the delivery man was patient while she slowly shuffled her way to the door. She directed him to carry the very tall, skinny parcel he had brought to a bare corner of the garden. He kindly helped her find the garden spade and pull a lawn chair over. Then she paid him and waved him off. Slowly, very slowly, she dug a big hole in the ground. It was hard work. Now and then she'd sit on the lawn chair to take a break. But she got back up several times until, eventually, the hole was just the right size. Slowly, very slowly, she shuffled and rotated the bottom of the tall, skinny parcel into the hole. Grr, blunk. She sat back down to inspect it and was satisfied. Slowly, very slowly, she began to push the dirt back into the hole all around the bottom of the parcel. That too was hard work. Over and again, she got tired. She sat down on the long chair to take a break. Then she got back up and finally she was finished. She unwrapped that tall, skinny parcel and there it was. You've probably guessed, a beautiful sapling tree. She sat down once again to admire it. About then, her neighbor arrived home and poked her head over the fence. She looked alarmed and said, Talia, you be careful. What are you doing? Planting a tree? Ridiculous! Someone your age? Is that a cherry tree? It won't produce cherries for years. Talia laughed as she pointed at a very old tree in the opposite corner of her garden. Some of its branches were broken right off. Others were bent with age. Most of them were bare, even though it was the middle of spring. She said, I'm like that old cherry tree. My great-grandmother planted it. I loved to climb in it when I was a little girl. Its branches were broad and strong. I felt safe there. Then, when I was a young woman, I picked some of its delicious pink blossoms and decorated my hair with them. I think that's how my husband came to notice me. The neighbor began to smile. As usual, there was no stopping Talia or her story. When I was a mother, I picked those cherries, cooked them to perfection, and served them to my family. When I was a grandmother, I rested in the shade of the cherry tree. Now, I'm a great-grandmother. Talia was looking very dreamy as she continued. I have lots of time on my hands. 
I sit and remember as I look out my window. Mostly, I am happy with my life. But a little while ago, as I sat looking out into my garden, I realized that I had never planted a tree. Never. It just didn't seem right. I have great-grandchildren. Great-grandchildren? asked the neighbor. Talia exclaimed, yes! They need a cherry tree! Of course, laughed the neighbor, as she pledged to herself to do something for her great-grandchildren too, even though she didn't yet have any. As for Talia, after planting the tree, she returned to her rocking chair to look out her window and smile. I wonder, what makes it difficult to take action that benefits the future?